Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market preparation video for November 21st, 2018. So, hey everyone, I ugh, yesterday was a pretty gruesome day for the market. Um, hopefully, you were being careful and not um, overly long. Um, I have been cautioning for some time on this, and um, I, I honestly, I did not expect such a big gap down uh, and move lower, but we got it, and now we have to uh, deal with what this means. So let's take a look here at the market. Let's try to remove all of our bias. Let's just have an honest look here at what's going on. So yesterday, uh, the Dow dropped pretty dramatically and we stopped right in here. Now, this stop right here is a good sign um, that the diamonds may try to hold on to these October lows. And this morning's pop up, we're getting a, a bullish move this morning. Futures are pushing us up. We're about 174 points. But let's keep in mind that all this really is at this point is a um, oversold rally. We're getting that bounce back rally this morning. Uh, keep in mind, we have created a another zone up here between here and here. There's another resistance level now on the market. That's all we've really done by opening up that gap. Now, could we rally to fill that gap? Yes, we could. And that would be a fairly typical typical uh, price action to see rally back up to fill that gap. But the question is, do we fail from there? I know there, I, I saw before the market was even closed yesterday, I saw people speculating, oh, the bottom is in, this is it. This is everybody trying to predict. Now, you know, there's been a lot of examples here recently um, of, of uh, big funds even going broke because they're gambling on what they believe the market should do, not on what the market is doing. Take a look at what the market is actually doing. Look at, for, look at it for what it is and notice what the market is telling us. We're obviously quite bullish. Could this be a bottom? Yes. But until we get some proof of that, all we're doing is wildly speculating on it, particularly as we head into a holiday where the volumes will likely drop off dramatically after the open rush. You know, we get everybody rushing in, everybody piling on, saying, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. This is the low. They pile on. We get that rush and then volume was likely to die off. We could easily rally back up into here and then fail. Now, certainly there's money that can be made here, but don't don't be speculating that this is the bottom. There's nothing here to prove that as of now. So holding on to this support is a very, very good thing. But let's also consider it wouldn't take a whole lot of news to drive us down to um, this next level or even to the bigger level right down here. It wouldn't take all that much of a push to shove us over that cliff. So kind of keep that in mind. We don't want to be overly speculative. We don't want to be overly bearish either and, and avoid uh, or miss the opportunities of catching a rally. But let's wait for some good signals. Let's not gamble. And, you know, somebody's got to do it, I guess. And, you know, if you, somebody's got to gamble. Somebody needs to provide liquidity to the market. And there's been a lot of folks doing that here recently. Just, just random, I mean, just wildly throwing their capital back at the market and losing it to the market, providing liquidity for those who are working a lot harder to trade with an edge. So consider that. SPY, SPY, also doing the same thing, holding on to that October low area. That's a good sign. We want to see that happen. We want to see that hold. We are getting a nice bounce this morning, but keep in mind, we could really be doing nothing but rallying to fill this gap. We've got a lot of work yet here to do. And something really concerning to me is how quickly, look at the 50-day moving average diving toward that 200 day moving average we're building by the time we rally up and and get some of this um, uh, 
technical damage taken care of in price, we're going to run right into the possibility of a death cross. The 50 crossing down through the 200 is what they call the death cross. We get that death cross. What we've done is created a massive level of resistance right here. We'll have to watch that pretty close. Also, the NASDAQ being the weakest of the market, the NASDAQ made a new low yesterday, breaking that October low and sinking pretty substantially. And you can see it's rallying back. We're getting a pop up this morning, lots of wild speculation um, on a potential bottom. That's great. Let the institutions do that. But remember, how many times have we been trapped here lately where we rush in, buy the gap up open, only to find out that there's sellers immediately after that coming into the market? So watch that careful. So this gap up, let's let's watch this. If it, We've got resistance to deal with here, significant resistance. And let's also keep in mind um, the queues are very, very close to reaching that death cross point, a major resistance area. So I'm not... I'm not so confident that this is over just yet. Expect quite a little bit of volatility yet in the market. Let's take a look at IWM. The Russell ended up holding on to that support. So we've got three of our indexes holding on to support. The Qs, nothing has really changed in the Qs. The Qs proved to have the power to pull the market lower. There's no reason to believe why that couldn't continue. Um, so kind of keep that in mind as you as you plan forward. Could this be a bottom? Yes, it definitely could be. Could this be the place we start start that little holiday rally? Yes, but it could also be just a short term oversold bounce on our journey lower to find um, uh, major levels of support. So keep that in mind. Let's take a look here at um, the VIX. The VIX yesterday rallying back up, and so far we're still in a good position here. First off, we, we held this area as support, and now, as of yesterday, we held on to this um, downtrend uh, in this little wedge pattern that's being formed here. I would suspect that the VIX this morning was such a nice gap up coming into the market. We'll push... Um, lower that's a good sign we'll just continue to wind this wedge hopefully we get that break lower here eventually on the VIX on that fear in the market let's take a look at um, T2122 which is that four week new high new low indicator and as you can see, we reached down here yesterday on that big move down, and I kind of suggested this yesterday, we would be pushing back down into this bullish reversal zone. That's exactly what happened. We we hit that bullish reversal zone, and now we're getting that bounce this morning. So we do have plenty of upside potential here. Let's keep in mind, though, that when we get these big spike days like we could see this morning, um, we had one over here that was immediately sold into it. We had one over here that was immediately sold into. This one might be different, but let's wait for a little bit of proof before we just wildly chase into the market, particularly head ahead of a holiday weekend. So consider those things as you plan your risk into the holiday. Let's take a look on the um, economic calendar today. We have a really big day because we've kind of shoved everything from Thursday over here into the economic calendar. We've got durable goods, jobless claims, consumer sentiment, existing home sales, the EIA petroleum status report, all coming out this morning that could move the market around. Um, keep keep in mind these two here could move us around first thing that you know before the market opens this morning also we have about 40 companies reporting earnings this morning that's something we want to uh, pay attention to and those companies um, are already reporting uh, results so far today so we'll want to whoops we'll want to uh, keep an eye on on that as um, the morning progresses. This can still flop around quite a bit because of the volatility of the market. So hey everyone, if you are planning to trade today, um, please you know be very, very careful. Realize that volume will likely die off pretty quickly. 
Markets are closed on Thursday. They'll trade half a day on Friday. You can expect Friday's price action to be um, well, pretty insipid, really. Um, there could be some action in there. Um, if you're a day trader, that may work as a swing trader, probably be pretty high risk. Most folks will be focused on their Black Friday bargain shopping. And then Cyber Monday on um, also, we typically see um, a traders extend their vacation uh, through that Monday. So we could see some light choppy um, action on Monday as well. So be careful out there. Plan your risk carefully. And with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic holiday. You know, we often forget how how great we have it here in this country and all of the things that we are truly blessed by. And... I want to wish you all uh, that great holiday season to, to, to be thankful for what uh, for what we have in this country and the things that um, it has provided us. And even thankful that uh, although the market has been kind of crummy um, here um, just recently, it has provided us with some great income, some great trading. So thankfully, um, we live in a place where we have the freedom to do that. Everyone, take care. Have an awesome awesome holiday weekend and we'll talk to you all very very soon um friday morning actually i'll talk to you all with a quick morning video take care everyone be safe in your travels we'll talk to you all very soon